just a little bit more about acting, uh, and then um, there's going to be a little bit more from me later about a couple of specific videos I want you to watch of two uh, remarkable, amazing acting actors doing some acting. Uh, that'll be later in the module. Um, but also notice that in the notes for this, where it says acting notes in this module, there are two very, very short clips of movies from the past, one with Jimmy Stewart and one with Marlon Brando, that illustrate some of the things in the notes that I haven't talked about in the lecture um, and that are better looked at through actually watching people act. If either of those intrigues you, um, On the Waterfront with Marlon Brando or um, uh, um, A Streetcar Named Desire, two great movies from the 50s that a lot of people probably, uh, a lot of your ages haven't watched. Uh, uh, amazing um, things that are closely related to theater, both kind of come out of the same tradition of theater, although they are movies and very entertaining and interesting movies. And then Mr. Smith Goes to Washington with Jimmy Stewart. There's a short clip um, which you might find interesting and charming. There are so many Jimmy Stewart movies um, beyond just um, It's a Wonderful Life, which you may have seen at Christmas time, um, which almost anybody would enjoy and which display so much that is rich about how acting actually works. So check those out if you want to. It's not an assignment for the class, but I uh, recommend it. Uh, do what it is. It is re um, requested in the class. So you watch those two, like two minute or whatever they are, clips. Uh, just to finish up a little bit on acting, um, uh, where does one do the training that we're talking about in terms of what an actor needs to learn and what an actor needs to do? Um, one of the things about acting is that it, for a lot of people in theater, it's a hobby. Um, people doing it in their high school drama class, a lot of them it's a fun thing to do, uh, or in colleges. But in particular, in community theaters across this country, most theater in this country, which I may have mentioned before in previous lectures, most theater is done by amateurs um, because of their love for the art form. And that's where a lot of people see theater. And sometimes it's really quite good. Sometimes it's horrible. And, some, and a lot of times it's in between. Um, but most theater is done by people because of their love for theater. However, theater is also a profession. It's what I do for a living. It's what a lot of my friends do for a living. Um, when I act in a play, people have to pay me money. Um, almost everybody acting in movies and TV that you see is being paid money. That's um, how those things happen. There are people making free videos and little movies and shows of themselves all the time for free, as you well know. You can go on YouTube and see that. Um, but professional acting is a, a job. It's a thing you can do. Um, a lot of professional actors, particularly in theater, go to school for that. At CRC, we have a theater department. This class comes out of that theater department. Um, but we also have a variety of classes that um, train people for maybe, if not to be professional actors, for careers in the theater. The theory at CRC would be that they probably go to a four-year college and finish an, an acting degree. Um, most actors I know who pursue an acting degree go on to get something called an MFA, a Master of Fine Arts, um, which is a postgraduate degree. So a lot of theater people and actors and designers and directors like myself spend maybe six years in college, um, which probably a lot of people don't know that the uh, a lot of actors and theater people spend almost as much time in college as doctors. It is um, uh, certainly not universal. Some people don't go to school at all. My, my bet, one of my best friends is a wonderful actor who's acted at Shakes at uh, at Ashland, and is a playwright. And he never did go to college. He just started working right out of high school. So it's certainly possible. Um, but a lot of people go to school for a long time because there is a lot to learn. Um, there's all sorts of theories that you learn in about acting in school. You can study the method, um, but you can study all the other things that are sort of like the method but aren't really the method. Um, almost no one who talks about the method is really talking about the actual method, and there's some reading that you're going to do that talks a little bit more about that. Um, you can study swordplay. You can study um, voice. You can study uh, movement. You can study the theater history and directing and design and all the various things, uh, and there are uh, lessons and workshops that are outside of schools. I teach um, 
acting sometimes to people out of the B Street Theater, where they just offer classes that people can sign up and pay money for um, to study um, acting or improv is a thing I teach sometimes. Um, that get, goes on all over the place. Uh, in order to get to a point where you can be good enough to kind of want to go out and, and be an actor, you can be a professional actor in Sacramento. There are a lot around here, not only for the four sort of professional um, theaters that pay actors that are here, but also there are, um, I know of a couple people who are on soap operas and commute down to L.A. but live in Sacramento. Um, and there is occasionally things shot in Sacramento, commercials and things that, that actors do um, locally. Obviously, a huge percentage of the professional acting business for theater is run out of New York, and for film and TV is run out of Los Angeles. But there are places all over the country now with large professional acting communities. Um, for theater, Minneapolis, Minnesota has one of the greatest theaters in the world, Ashland, Oregon, um, Houston and Dallas, Texas, uh, Atlanta has a big theater scene, uh, Kansas City has a big theater scene, um, San Francisco, the Bay Area has a big theater scene, Seattle and Portland have big theater scenes. Um, like um, film acting, um, and if you follow the news at all, you've seen um, information about Screen Actors Guild uh, on on TV and the fact that they're currently on strike, uh, stage actors have a union. It's called Equity or Actors' Equity Association. Uh, I'm a member of Actors' Equity. It is the union for stage actors. Um, if you are in that union, you are theoretically only allowed to act in union plays, but you get a, a minimum wage. It's not very high, I'll be honest for you, to you. It's not a great way, unless you are literally on Broadway, to make a lot of money. Um, but it protects you, and you do get pension and health. Um, you have to work 22 weeks a year in order to get the full benefits from being in Actors' Equity, and most members do not get there. Uh, most members do not get there 22 weeks a year. Um, I probably have mentioned before, most actors, even professional actors, earn most of their living by being waiters or um, office personnel or teachers. I um, Most years I earn more from being a teacher um, and a director, my main job is director, than I do from acting particularly in recent years. I've barely acted at all, but I'm still a member of the union, so if I act, I get that protection and I get that um, minimum support. Um, in L.A. and New York, almost all actors have an agent um, who they will work with and uh, or a management of some sort, um, but it is a slog just to be an actor. Um, a lot of professional actors spend 10 times the amount of time auditioning are trying to get roles than they do actually playing roles. Um, but I will tell you, let's be honest, it's not a very good way to get wealthy. Uh, it's not a very good way to get secure. It's a very stressful world being a professional actor and not knowing where your next job has come. It's the kind of thing where COVID happens and unlike some other professions, your entire profession just disappears. Actors just didn't work for a year and a half. Um, almost all actors just didn't work for a year and a half. Um, but it's also pretty cool. It's a fun thing to be. Um, it's an exciting and creative and artistic thing to be. Um, and thank goodness there are such wonderful actors because we now have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of television shows, movies, uh, and to some extent, theater is coming back, and there's more and more professional theater you can see in places um, all over the country. Um, and, you know, I am always going to be a supporter of actors and acting, um, both because sometimes, every once in a while, I am one, but because as I started this lecture talking about, I think it is the most important connection for an audience to a story. The actor is the key. The actor is the conduit. The actor is the place through which we experience emotions and sadness and comedy and um, anger and, and drama. Drama is created 
by the conflict between two people, which is represented on stage or on screen by the conflict between two actors or three actors or hundreds of actors. Uh, and so actors are pretty essential. All right. Uh, let's talk some more about actors later. Uh, thank you. Uh, let, once again, I've lost the button to stop the thing, but I found it now.